we are good to begin. Hello and welcome. It's two minutes, four minutes after 10, <laughs> and we are ready to get into week number five. Oh, my goodness, can you believe it? Where has the time gone? Week number five of the financial literacy program for young adults um, called L Plus Earn and brought to you by the Assisa Foundation. If it is your first time, welcome. My name is Darren August. Most of you know me by now. We've been together for five weeks, three more weeks left. And every single Saturday, I literally jump out of bed because I'm so on time and present this webinar. Um, I haven't even seen your faces, but I feel like I know you guys. I feel like we're on this journey together. And so what an amazing privilege it is um, for us to be able to bring this program to you. Thank you to every single one of you for showing up every week, for showing up on time, for being engaged in the program, and for really being committed to securing your financial future. That's what it's all about. If there's anything we achieve out of this entire program, it's that our young people are going to be making much better financial decisions. And that's really what it's all about. So thank you to the Assisa Foundation for putting together this program. Thank you to everybody in the background, the entire team, Crystal and everyone else who runs this webinar and make sure that it runs so smoothly every week. Thank you to all of you. But most importantly, thank you to every single one of you who have tuned in this morning. Let's get into it. Today's topic is going to, we're going to be talking about work readiness, all right? And so as you start, as you complete your studies, you'll be starting to send out your CV or post it online in search of job opportunities. And so this webinar explores how to present your CV, first of all, so that you will stand out to recruiters. And then we're going to look at how to prepare for a job interview. And once that job is yours, how do you read your payslip? You know, it's because some of us are going to be ex um, experiencing and receiving payslips for the first time. And so we want to start giving you an introduction into what this legal document and this important document is. All right. And then we're going to talk about some of the deductions that you may experience once you start entering the world of work and of course, um, just for you to start managing your salary better as well. So that's really what we are going to be covering today. And so the topic of today's webinar is work readiness. All right. Um, I have great guests with me as usual. Uh, the team has searched far and wide to bring you the absolute best of the best to handle today's topics. And so without further delay, I'm going to invite my two guests to quickly switch their cameras on and say hello. So we have Tepiso Ramotewa. Um, Tepiso, if you could quickly switch on and say hello to everybody on the webinar today. Hi, everyone. I am so excited to be here with you today. <laughs> awesome stuff. Uh, we're going to get to know Tepiso a little bit more later on. I'll introduce her formally, and we're going to tackle a discussion with her. And then we also have Kudzai Mbele with us. Kudzai, if you could switch your camera on and quickly say hello to everybody on the webinar this morning. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm, I hope you're happy to be here because I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> awesome stuff. Thank you so much, Kudzai. We know we had a challenge with Kudzai's network and she's done everything to make sure we can hear her, see her, okay? And your ladies are looking absolutely lovely today. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on the webinar today. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, we're going to get into it later with them. But for now, another reminder that the Alpha's Earn Moodle platform is designed to extend this discussion even after the webinar. And so register and use it weekly after the webinars to access resources, participate in forums and quizzes, earn yourself badges and stand in line to win weekly prizes. So check your mailbox for your login details. Um, check your junk mail as well, because sometimes it goes through to your junk mail. Um, and remember the hashtag is the hashtag secure the bag. If you don't have your login details or you have any issues registering on the Moodle platform, you can send an email to crystal at groundedmedia.co.za. She will type that in the chat as well. All right, and you'll be able to connect with it there. Then, of course, we have the L Plus Earn website where there are great resources and also all of the recordings of these webinars are available on the website as well. And so you can go back, watch your favorite webinar, watch some of the webinars you've missed, or simply recap on the content that is covered every single week. All right, and so that's www.lplusearn.org.za where you will be able to access the um, information, access some great resources, um, and watch the webinar recordings. All right, and so I think let us get straight into some prizes, all right, and so we have a couple of winners from week four. This is for engaging on Moodle. This is for being, for participating in the webinars. These are people that have just stood out in the last week, and so our winners for today, drum rolls, everybody. First up, we have Dike Lady Ramof 
Ramo Falo. Yeah, Ramo Falo um, for participating in forums and quizzes this week. So, um, Dika Lady, you get a 300 Rand grocery voucher from Checkers. Uh, and so, we, that's your prize for the week. Can we have some congrats in the chat? For Dika Lady, well done to you, Dika Lady. You win yourself a 300 Rand voucher. Next up, we have, drum roll please, Tiani Goba. All right, Tiani Goba, newly registered and participated in forums and quizzes this week. And so Tiani, well done to you. You get a 300 Rand voucher as well. And um, now that we've given you 300 Rand to get your groceries for the week, you get to possibly save 300 Rand somehow. Um, that's what we encourage you to do. Lots of congratulations coming through in the chat. Remember guys, throughout the webinar, please engage with us in the chat. If you have any questions for our guests, type it in the chat or the Q&A box. Um, we will get to it at the end. And of course, if you have any issues, Crystal is watching the chat as well and she will be able to assist you. Remember to use the hashtag, hashtag secure the bag. And once more, just a reminder that all of this information and that we're sharing with you, as well as additional resources, is available on the website www.alplusearn.org.za. This is where we're at. We are on week five today. Can you believe it? We've been together for five weeks already, and I feel like this journey is just getting more and more exciting as we build on the knowledge that we're receiving every week. Today, we're talking work readiness, and then we've got three webinars left, um, and that is finances and mental health entrepreneurship and side hustle remember guys that you do receive a certificate of attendance for attending the, the this program for being part of this program and so it's so so important that you show up every week you need to attend 60 percent of all of the webinars to get that certificate and i think it's something that could possibly really just um help you um, and show your commitment to a program and to um being committed to your financial future but more than that the information that we receive here every week is absolutely priceless and so let's get into it. So um, as I mentioned earlier on, now that you are done with your studies or you're approaching the end of your studies, you are going to be entering the world of work. And so you're going to be transitioning from tertiary education to this world of work and starting to interact with different people. And so it's so, so important that we start building new skills that is going to help us to enter the world of work and be successful in that space. And so we need to start thinking about things like our communication skills and time management and how we interact with other people. You're going to get there and you're going to have somebody who's been working in a company for 20 years and all you've been used to up to this point is everybody being the same age as you in, like, in the lectures at, at university. And so there's going to be team dynamics that come into place. You're going to have to um, be meeting deadlines. There's going to be presentations you're going to need to be doing. So your life is about to change as you enter the world of work. And that's why this topic is actually so close to our hearts and so important as well. And that's why we include it in this program. And so um, when it comes to entering the world of work, obviously, um, the main way people decide on employing somebody is by looking at your CV. And so it's so, so important that you prepare a great CV, that it looks good, that you it's relevant, that you keep it short. And I do know that Tepiso is going to touch on this in depth, all right? And so I'm not going to talk about it too much because I want to actually get her to unpack it really, really well for us. But know that part of getting into the world of work is that you are going to use a CV and you are going to be posting it online. You're going to be submitting it to recruiters. And so it's so, so important that you get it right that you get it looking good and that your CV does its job, which is to get the attention of the person that you are trying to um, secure an interview with. Then of course, we know that once you've submitted your CV, you need to attend an interview. And so that's something else we're gonna be talking about today. We're gonna to be talking about the do's and don'ts of preparing for an interview. I like the last one and I see that it says, don't ask about the salary and the benefits in the first interview. <laughs> if the interview doesn't, the interviewer doesn't raise it, it can be a question for a follow-up interview, all right? And so those are little, um, I feel like just some interview etiquette, all right, that some people don't know. I've heard of people showing up with their mom or dad to the interview and you're trying to work at this corporate company, but you've brought your mom or your dad along. It doesn't work like that, okay? And so we're going to, we're going to um, talk about that throughout this conversation with Tepiso as well. Let me quickly stop and get this 
comment here from Precious that says, I'm so not ready for work, looking for a job interview, etc. I would rather just learn, learn, learn by doing honors, masters, and, and. You see, you can't escape it, guys. At some point, you are going to have to step out of your comfort zone, especially if studying is your comfort zone, and you're going to have to get into the space where you are now starting to interact with recruiters and get into um the world of work all right <laughs> so many of you are saying yo that's me yo i can i can imagine it's it's scary guys um Kinsan is saying one thing that has always bothered me about submitting my cv is how to beat the ats technology it's good for our cvs but um, don't make it past the first stage what tips can be used to beat the ats Great one. We're going to get that question to Tepiso later on. So, so Tepiso, you could possibly maybe start looking at that question and prepping to give us an answer for that one. Then, guys, as we know, there are scammers around every corner. There are scammers who know that you're going to be investing. So there's investment scammers. And there are even scammers who know that people are looking for jobs and they will try and scam you there as well. All right. And so very important that you be aware of that. Don't pay money to secure an interview recruiters shouldn't be charging you admin fees um, or to do credit checks and that sort of thing and so you need to be wise and you need to be vigilant when you are entering the, the world of work and especially when you're starting your job hunt all right take caution when you are guaranteed a job very important and um, when applying online keep your settings private right you don't want to be able you don't want to become a victim of fraud because you've entered all of your information on an online platform don't share your personal information such as banking details um be cautious with that and check for the authenticity of a company, all right? So if you're invited for an interview, check the address. Don't show up for an interview that's happening in the back of a, an alley somewhere, all right? They're going to kidnap you and they're going to human traffic you. So check out the organization, check out the company so that you don't fall victim to a scam, all right? Very, very important. And then when you are in the world of work, we do know that you are going to be receiving a payslip. And so it's important to understand some of the deductions that come off your salary. And so a couple of them are obviously we get government deductions, such as tax or, or known as PAYE, which is pay as you earn, and UIF, which stands for the Unemployment Insurance Fund. Then we get compulsory deductions, and that are things from your employer, where your employer automatically deducts certain amounts from your salary. So those are things like group benefits, um, things like your provident fund or your pension fund, funeral cover. Then there are voluntary deductions, such as union subscriptions or social club <laughs> subscriptions. Okay, those are voluntary deductions. And then there are contractual deductions. And so for instance, things like maintenance orders or garnishy orders, if there are those on your, um, your salary. And it's very important to be able to understand all of those deductions and what they are for, all right? One thing, guys, is also a lot of um, companies and a lot of websites actually have online calculators as well. And so make use of those, especially when you're applying for a job, you're offered the salary and you're trying to figure out how much am I actually going to leave with at the end of the day? Get online, check out some of the online calculators, put in the salary, see how much you can expect to pay on for UIF, see how much you can expect to pay for tax so that you make an informed decision. You don't grab a job that ends up you just working for your transport money because you thought you were going to leave with this amount at the end of the month. But after all of those deductions, it's actually a completely different amount. And so you want to always be informed and you want to always be in a position where you are making informed decisions. One of the things that I want to quickly mention, if I just go back to this slide here, is when it comes to those, so, so some of the advantages of those um, compulsory and voluntary deductions is that you don't even have to think about these payments. So when it comes to things like pensions and provident funds and those sort of things, it almost reiterates that principle we learned about a couple of weeks ago with, um, who was it? Um, with, with, with one of our financial planners, where she spoke about forced savings. Remember, we spoke about that concept of forced savings. And so that is part of the reason why it's great to have some of these deductions automatically going off your salary for pension, for provident funds, so that you're taking care of retirement, even while you are working, even while it is maybe your first job. It's really encouraging that process of forced savings because it's saved in a separate place and it's there for the day you retire. All right, so very, very important, um, and I think it's a great thing to understand. So make sure that you understand why you are being, um, how you are being um, 
the deductions going off your account and also make sure that you understand what they are for. And there we go. Let's welcome our first guest without further delay. So excited to bring her up on screen this morning. We have Kudzai Mbele with us. She is a tax and accounting intern at Standard Trust Limited. She's recently completed her Bachelor of Commerce in Finance at the University of Johannesburg and is currently studying towards a professional certificate in administration of tax, trusts and estates. Kudzai is very passionate about finances and using her acquired skills to contribute positively to society at large. Kudzai, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to today's webinar. Thank you, Darren. I'm so happy to be here. Awesome stuff. I'm going to take my screen down. I'm going to stop sharing so that we can see you nice and clearly. And we're going to get straight right. into the discussion. And so um, how was the process like for you applying for a learnership opportunity? Were you aware of the organization while studying at Varsity? Had you participated in vacation work while studying? How did you get into that? So the process for me was a bit um, challenging as everyone else that it's hard to apply and everything. But I believe that with enough courage and boldness, and if you've actually put in the work, as in, if in your CV, and you've actually worked on yourself enough to be able to present yourself, as a virtual professional, I believe uh, the process becomes easier by the day. And I believe that you get a bit of rejection letters there and there. And I believe that you can use like the rejection as redirection, right? It's not rejection meant for failure, but it's just redirecting you in the right path as to what you can work on in improving your CV and whatnot. And uh, the organization, I knew it as um, Standard Bank basically being like the group name, but Standard Trust Limited, I was not very familiar with it because it's a fiduciary business and I wasn't um, more into that, maybe into the bank itself, but not into the, the company. And then also, yes, um, it, when, when I was in varsity, I actually, not vacation work per se, but um, I was part of a few departments Well, I used to play um, as a professional footballer and um, I played for the varsity team. And then also I worked as a tutor, an accounting tutor. And also I served as a peer mentor to first years, like offering them guidance. And I also served as a house committee. So I was a deputy person. So I believe those things actually helped equip me um, into in terms of like being a team player, having leadership skills, and also being able to present yourself to the world out there. Wow. What, what else do you think enhanced your chances of getting noticed for this opportunity? Because I can assume that they were, you weren't the only one who applied for this opportunity. Yeah. There were probably tons of young people. What made you, um, what enhanced you? Um, I believe that uh, I worked on my CV, as you're saying. Um, I, made, I kept it simple. I kept it, I kept it straightforward and short. And I made sure that... Um, it's something that is very appealing to the reader, right? It's something that the person wants to know more when they read the CV, just like a summary and they're interested in getting to know me more. And I believe that what enhanced my opportunity even more is that um, when I showed up for the interview, um, I had attended such sessions like the work readiness program. I had great coaches, like people helping me in the background, like those programs actually help equip me for that moment. So when the interview came, I was able to show up as a virtual professional and I gave it my ultimate best and I avoided asking those questions of salaries and whatnot. And I believe that um, I was myself, I was authentic, I was um, not trying to be someone else uh, and I was present. So I believe that being present, being authentic was what actually contributed more to what, um, to, the to me getting the opportunity, so yeah. I think you're going to be famous after this webinar because some people are going to tweet your quote, use your rejection as redirection. I like that because <laughs> I had to execute the back Balwe. <laughs> Thank you, Siba Balwe, for that comment. So how has this learnership opportunity been like for you so far? And what aspects have been challenging and what has helped you manage in this process? Um, I believe that um, the opportunity is a very exciting one. It's a new environment. Everything is fascinating. Everything is exciting. You get people that are older than you and you just get to learn from everyone, right? And I believe what was most challenging was to actually now be acquainted to the whole working environment and um, now having to have time management, uh, having to show up every day at your level best and having to do your best every day. 
And um, I believe that uh, with enough confidence, uh, self-esteem and always being yourself actually helped me overcome those challenges. And I believe that also asking from the people that have been there for some time, asking for guidance, also not being shy, basically, and just asking where you need help, being a team player also helped in making the whole experience a bit easier. Mm. Um, you, you mentioned earlier on some coaching and mentorship. Did you receive coaching and mentorship before you, you entered this opportunity? Are you currently still receiving um, career coaching and mentorship? And how did this assist you to be better prepared? So yes, before I entered into this opportunity, throughout my university years, I had um, a coach. So one of my coaches was actually Tepi, who's here with us today. And I believe she'll share some amazing tips because she really helped me. Uh, she helped, really helped in terms of helping um, boost my self-esteem and branding. So she helped me create this brand that everyone is just willing to buy into. So I can, I can definitely say that uh, people are interested in buying into my brand because she showed, she, t she taught me how to show up. She taught me how to be present and how to be my most authentic self, how to have integrity, discipline, accountability and all those things, right? And I believe she'll share more on those. So I had coaching and I believe that actually um, uh, contributed mostly to how I approach, like I approached the whole interview thing and how I actually hold, held my, myself up. And even now I'm still receiving coaching because I went out there and actually tried to find people in the workplace that can actually coach me into something that I'm looking into into the future. So I believe that going out there and asking and as asking for help and asking for people to actually, you know, help you to get to where you are, because I believe that no one can make it on their own. You obviously need people to help you um, get to where you want to go, right? So you can actually use those coaching sessions and people that are guiding you as building blocks and steps that you can actually use to get to the top. And that is what has, has helped me. And the coachings were amazing. And even now I can still say that the coachings are actually, since now we're in the whole virtual platform, they're helping me show more, like show up more as a virtual professional and stand out basically when I'm on a platform. So yeah. Nice. I like that term, virtual professional. It sounds so. It sounds so great. And that's really that's really the, the times we're living in right now. Um, yeah. Could I let's move the discussion now into finances, right? So in terms of your yeah. finances, we know that you obviously now are starting to earn money. What adjustments have you had to make in how you manage your finances, um, especially as a student and now as a new trainee employee? Oh my God. Uh, yeah, finances. <laughs> Yeah, that was one challenging aspect because uh, now it had to be a thing of um, no one is responsible for your finances anymore. Like you have to make sure that you plan accordingly. You have to make sure that you have a budget. You have to make sure that you invest, you save and all that is on you now. And you didn't have to worry about those things when you were in school, but now you're being taught that you have to invest for your future. And if ever you want to start a business, you must start putting in the work now. So um, I believe um, the transitions we're having to, the first thing that I struggled with um, that like the most is transport money. So I was on campus, I didn't have to uh, take transport to uh, camp, uh, like my classes and whatnot, so I just had to walk there. So now I had to save up for transport, I have to make sure that every time there's lunch money, and also at, by the end of the month, I help out like with um, things that are needed to be done at home. So now they're no longer giving you money, but you're also kind of contributing to the house uh, activities. And also uh, ensuring that you save, right? Because COVID has shown us that nothing is guaranteed and it has shown us that you like tomorrow is not promised. So you don't know if you might um, be receiving an income tomorrow. So I believe that saving is the one thing that is very important that I've learned this year. And um, I believe it, it is all achievable by having like a proper budget in terms of how you distribute your income and also being left with that amount that you're gonna put away. And yeah. I'm laughing because one of the one of the comments in the chat earlier on, I can't remember who it was, was saying, I'm so not ready for the world of work because I'm used <laughs> to campus free Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah. And, data. and would you say that's that's a real a real transition you have to deal with? 
Yes, because uh, sometimes you have to keep, uh, keep up with the work after work and you're at home. Now you need data, you need Wi-Fi in order to continue with the work. And yeah, that is also something that you need to look into. Absolutely. Um, as we wrap up the discussion with you uh, at this point, Kutai, what tips would you give to other young people and students on how they can make the transition from being a student to being an employee? How do they make that a bit more easier? How do they make that more manageable? I believe um, attending these um, so webinars such as this one can actually help enhance your skills and your knowledge. And another thing that can actually add to that is being authentic, being present, uh, showing up as your most like authentic self and just uh, taking the process as it comes, like trust the process and don't rush anything, be patient. Because when you rush, uh, the chances are that you might feel like you're slacking, like things are not going in your way and others are far ahead of you. And that is not the way to go about it. You just need to be patient, trust the process and have integrity. I believe that integrity is one of the things that can carry you through always doing what you say that you, what you say you will do and being accountable and have discipline throughout the whole process and I believe that can actually take you through and those are um, principles that you can actually live by and they can carry you through throughout like your whole life. Beautiful. Could I thank you so much. I think this has been so informative. I can see so many comments coming through in the chat. Guys, if you do have any questions for Kudzai, please type them in the chat. We're going to try and get to them at the end. I really want to see if we can get as much Q&A going today after um, our guests have spoken. But for now, thank you, Kudzai. Don't go anywhere. Um, you, uh, we'll get you back at the end and start thinking of a tip for the week that I would like you to end off with before we say goodbye at the end of the webinar. All right. Thank you, Darren. <laughs> what a lovely discussion with Kudzai. I feel like um, because she's so close to where you guys are right now, she's literally just made that transition. I feel like it was just so, so relatable. And so thank you, Kudzai. Next up, we have Tsepiso Ramotewa. She is a leadership coach at Teto Leadership and Coaching Academy. Her focus is training employees to bring value to their work through growing, learning, and being game-changing professionals who remain globally competitive. I love that. Um, Tepiso is a trained coach and a qualified motivational MAPS practitioner. Her career highlights include representing South Africa at a global leadership platform, One Young World, and being selected as one of South Africa's 100s, 100s, 100 brightest young minds. Tepiso, what a beautiful CV, what a great um, track record you have. Welcome to the webinar today. Thank you so much. Thanks, Darren. <laughs> Absolutely great to have you with us. Um, we've got a couple of questions for you and then I see that the chat is also just being flooded with questions because it's not every day we get to speak to somebody who literally can coach people into um, getting great jobs. And so let's start off with what are the realities of the job market currently? What should students have in mind? I think, you know, the job market right now for young people is very competitive. Things are very difficult. Um, we're sitting at about a 40% unemployment rate, um, especially for young people in particular. So young people need to understand just how competitive the job market is and really think beyond just getting your qualification. You know, getting a degree in this economy isn't enough. So you really need to think about what else you can do to beef up your CV. What else can you do to really make yourself stand out? So you really need to start thinking of yourself. And I, you know, I love that because I shared some of the, the things that we have taught um, our students in the coaching sessions. You really need to think of yourself as a brand. So, you know, your, your degree adds one level of value to your brand, but what else can you add in order to make your brand even more valuable to a potential employer? I see some of the comments saying, sure, these stats are scary, but it's so true and it's really so important. So, Tepiso, um, what credible sites can one use to post a CV in a job search? We know these days everything happens online, but how mm -hmm. do we know that a site is credible and what are some credible sites? So I would say that the, the, you know, the first place to start would be LinkedIn. A lot of organizations will post um, opportunities on LinkedIn. So just make sure that you have a professional looking LinkedIn page. 
um, and then also going to particular business websites because they will post job opportunities there as well. And then sites like Puff and Pass and Career24, obviously you just need to have a level of discernment when you do look at those opportunities on those sites in particular. Um, because you don't want to be scammed. You don't want to fall victim to people that are preying on young people such as yourselves that are looking for opportunities. And if you do find an opportunity on a website that maybe isn't vetted, give the company a call, you know, give them a call and say, listen, I've seen that there is this opportunity. Is it a credible opportunity? Do you guys work with this particular recruitment company? Is it something that you would suggest that somebody actually applies for just to make sure that you don't end up um, being a victim to to unscrupulous people. Great. Let's talk about the interview. All right. <laughs> so when preparing for an interview, what is important to keep in mind? And I know there are tons of questions, especially around around the interview process. I saw one of the comments that just came through saying interviews are not for us introverts. <laughs> so maybe you could touch on that as well in your response. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I saw another question around dress code um, for virtual interviews. Yes, you still need to dress up, even if it is a virtual interview. You know, you want to put your best foot forward. Like I was saying, you are a brand. So you want to represent your brand in the best possible way. So even if you're not an extrovert, you know, you don't have to change who you are, but you also need to show up. So you can't, you know, get to an interview and mumble and shy. That's not the time to be shy. You know, it's a really that one opportunity. You need to put your game face on. Um, in a lot of ways, you need to fake it till you make it. You know, not be over the top because, like, because I was saying, you have to be authentic. People, people can sense when you're you're not really being yourself. But I think really putting your best foot forward and selling yourself well that's the most important thing. You know, the biggest disservice that we do for ourselves and to ourselves when we are going after opportunities that we really want is not selling ourselves well. So A, you need to be prepared. You need to be prepared. You need to know, you know, what opportunity you're there for. You need to have some sort of context around the company and you need to know yourself. Um, so you need to, so we, because they're going to ask you personal questions. Tell us about yourself. You know, what are some of your strengths? Um, what value do you think that you could add to the company? And those are some of the things that you need to sort of have an idea of. You need to know yourself well enough for you to really, really sell yourself very well. I wish we had time to role play an interview. I feel like that is going to be so great <laughs> to ask you questions and hear some of the responses that we could give in a, in a scenario like that. But let's talk about what can young people do while studying to increase their likelihood of securing a job after graduating? So, you know, like Kazai shared, um, she is actually one of my previous students. And the one thing that I always used to say, and I still say to my students is, look for leadership opportunities. Look for leadership opportunities, and, you know, at your university. If there are opportunities for you to mentor high school students at your old high school, do that. Get a part-time job. You need to show that you are somebody who takes a full responsibility for their life. And for me as a coach, that is one of the key things that I teach my clients. You need to take full responsibility for what you want. If you want change in your life, you can't wait for somebody to bring the change for you and to you. You need to go out there. You need to be proactive. You need to constantly be aware that the bare minimum isn't enough. So you need to go above and beyond. You need to do the next thing. You need to constantly think about what else you can do to really showcase that you're the kind of person who is proactive, you take charge, you know, that leadership potential is there and you're, you're the kind of person who's going to identify opportunities and find opportunities to lead because those are the things that um, organizations are going to look for, especially when attracting young talent. I, I coach for a lot of organizations and, you know, really organizations want the top of the, you know, top of the range, cream of the crop, top tier young talent. They want young people who are visionaries, who are, have the stellar work ethic and who have been able to showcase that that's who they are. 
Yeah, I do know that you might touch on this somewhere, but I see the question in the chat and so I'm going to quickly go to it. It says, so do you have any tips on the questions you need to ask in an interview? The only question I always ask is, do you provide training to successful candidates? And that's obvious. Mm. <laughs> so what are mm. some of the other questions that young people can ask in that interview um, with a, a, a recruiter or a possible employee, employer? Definitely ask questions. It really shows that you are interested in the organization that you could potentially work for. So that's a great question. Asking them, you know, what is your ethos around training young talent? What is your uh, method? What do, what do you guys think about leadership? Um, what are some of the goals that the company has? And in my role, how would I then be able to support you in being able to meet those goals? Because essentially that's what you're going to be doing. Um, Asking them about how they work in terms of team, you know, teamwork, is, is it a very collaborative space or do people work individually? Because that's also something that you need to know as well, especially if you're an introvert, if you're going to be working in a team and need to collaborate with people all the time, then it's a muscle that you need to start building as well. And you need to be aware that you're really going to have to make an effort in that regard. So really, you know, show an interest. If there's been something in the news recently, you know, it shows that you are also up to date in terms of current affairs and ask mm -hmm. them, you know, you know, what's happening with X situation or actually I read about this or I heard this on the radio. Could you tell me more about it? So really showing an interest in the organization is something that's going to make people really notice you very quickly. Very nice one. All right, then for graduates who have an opportunity to be part of a graduate program or a graduate development program or internship, what tips do you have on how they can make the most of that opportunity? You need to have a plan. You need to have a plan. You need to have set milestones that you need to reach. So in an internship, obviously, it's about getting work experience without the, um, you know, getting a job at the end of the internship. So it's very important for you to be clear about what you need to achieve in these 12 months in order to make you as employable as possible. So if it's about getting um, work experience, what are the goals? What are the key things that I need to learn? Because you need to learn fast and you need to put yourself in the best possible position for you to then go look for other opportunities after the internship. In terms of graduate programs, um, those are a little bit more sturdy because you are guaranteed a job after the graduate program in most businesses. So it really is about showcasing your value. You know, business wants people who are going to add value. They don't just want anyone. So it's very important for you to be mindful about the value that you're going to add why are they, you know, what are the kinds of things that you need to be mindful of, you need to be strategic, you need to build your network, you need to make sure that um, your work really speaks for itself, you, you're not just going to get into the job and then get a false sense of security and sort of feel like I've, I've made it, I don't have to show up, you need to continuously find opportunities to learn and grow and develop yourself. This is so, so, so helpful. I think um, the young people are learning so much on this webinar today. So let's talk about scams, all right? How do we identify scams when applying for jobs? As soon as somebody tells you that you need to pay for that opportunity, then for me, that's a massive, massive red flag. It's, you know, very unlikely that a massive corporate is going to ask you to pay for a job. So it's very important for you to be mindful of that. If people start asking you very intrusive questions, um, they start asking you for personal information, they want you to meet at a random office somewhere, that's when you really need to, you know, be mindful because you, you need to be safe and really protect yourself. So if somebody asks to meet you somewhere at a random building, Google it, you know, find out what's going on. If it's a, you know, Gmail email address, then that's also a red flag. Google the company, call the company, call whichever uh, corporate that they claim to represent and, and ask the questions to say, listen, do you guys work with this recruitment agency? Because, you know, they, they have us out here going to um, interviews for this position. Is it a real um, position? Is it a real opportunity? Or is it something that we need to be mindful of? So that level of discernment is going to be very important because you don't want people to take advantage of you. 
Great one. So, um, Tepiso, so when putting out applications, how long are applicants likely going to be waiting for an opportunity? And then what, is, what can one do if these opportunities are just not coming up? What do you do when you're faced with rejection after rejection after rejection? You know, that's a very tricky question, Darren, because there is no telling how long you are going to wait. Um, you could wait a month, you could make three months, you could wait up, up to a year. There's really no telling. And the one thing that I will say is you need to be resilient. You know, you really need to build that muscle. You need to just keep going until an opportunity lands. So don't um, become discouraged when things don't work out in a manner or in the time frames that you would have liked. And I always say to my clients, you know, it's it's so important to be proactive and to be mindful of time. For example, October for me, October and November is when I give my clients the challenge to really sit and start planning for 2022. Because you can't plan for 2022 in December. December is such a chaotic month. There's just too much going on. You know, you don't have the space to sit and really focus and be clear minded and really set goals for the next year. So it's important if you need to start looking for opportunities, it's important to really put pen to paper down and start thinking of the organizations you'd like to work for one day, the kinds of jobs that you're interested in, do the research, call the organizations, call, call them and say, hi, listen, you know, I'm a graduate. Is there somebody who's in charge of graduate recruitment? What are some of the steps that I need to take? Are there opportunities? Because this is when some of my corporate clients start recruiting for next year's graduate programs. So this is the time for you to really start pushing, start making those calls, start, you know, looking for graduate program opportunities and start putting yourself out there. But don't, you know, don't lose heart, you know, just keep pushing until that opportunity comes. And really just don't let the rejection letters knock your confidence, which is easier said than done. Not every opportunity is the right opportunity for you. So you need to have faith that the right opportunity is going to show up because you just keep pushing and you keep submitting your CV. Nice one. Somebody saying shooting our shot to great advice. <laughs> and so <laughs> I'm confident that you on this webinar today, I, I'm, I'm believing that it's going to go well for you, that you're going to get, you're going to get the opportunities much quicker than those who have not attended a program like this. And so then we move into the discussion about salary. Now you're earning a salary or you're earning a stipend or you're getting some form of income as a, a trainee employee or a new employee or being part of a graduate program. What tips can you give us today on managing money from the first salary onwards? Oh, earning money can really make you so dizzy because it's just like, oh, I'm an adult now. I can just do whatever I want. But you really need to be logical. You need to have a plan. You need to have a vision. You need to be structured because it's very easy to just blow through your salary because you feel like, well, I've got another check coming next month. But the thing is, is that, you know, you really want to start building a healthy credit score very early on in your career. You don't want to go and open up all of the clothing accounts so that you you know, look great every single, you need to be pragmatic and you need to be sensible. So how can you build a healthy um, credit record for yourself so that one day you're in the best possible position to buy a house, to put down a deposit for an apartment or to buy a car? And fortunately, you know, you have professionals like Kazai and you have financial institutions that you can actually go and sit down with someone and say, listen, in three years time, I want to buy an apartment. In five years time, I want to buy a house. What are some of the, you know, financial products that I can um, get now? How much money do I need to start saving so that I can make that happen? So really having your, a vision for your life is so important and it's going to determine how you then spend your money and how you consciously spend your money because that's also important. And December's coming. So many people are going to blow through, you know, their salaries and by the time Jen hits, you know, then reality you know, is, <laughs> comes crashing down on them that now they broke and they can't do this. They don't have petrol to get to work. And then it just becomes so chaotic. So you don't want to live your life in reaction. You want to be conscious. You want to plan. You want to put things in place in a way that's going to really enhance your life. 
and that you're getting the very most out of actually earning a salary. Tefiso, I feel like we could talk to you all day. <laughs> and I feel like you literally are coaching us on the webinar today. But thank you so much. Um, I'm going to get you back for Q&A shortly. I think if I could ask you to possibly check in the chat and see if there's two or three questions that stood out for you that you feel like you'd like to address during that Q&A, just because there are so many and we're definitely not going to get through all of them. But maybe choose two that you feel like is going to get, add the most value to everybody on the webinar. But for now, thank you so much for the discussion. Um, and Thanks, think about the week as well. And remember, guys, the conversation can continue on Moodle. So please um, make sure that you are registered on Moodle. There are quizzes, there are forums. And so have this discussion. Um, some of you are giving such great tips um, in the chat. And so let's just, let's continue that discussion on Moodle. Could Zai Tepiso, if I can invite you to um, put your cameras on one more time for us and let's just do a couple of questions. Tepiso, let's start off with you. I don't know if you've noticed any that you wanted to tackle or if I can shoot with some that I have. So I saw a question um, about bursaries not allowing students to have jobs. So our bursary also, we, we don't allow our students to have full-time employment, but we do encourage our students to get VAC work. Um, like Kudzai was part of her um, raise housing committee. So, you know, it really is about communicating with your bursary um, and really letting them know what you're thinking about. So it might not be a full-time job because obviously we become worried about you becoming distracted and not having enough time to apply yourself to your studies, but it also is very important. Um, and maybe just speaking from our bursary's perspective for our students to have those leadership opportunities. So that work is definitely encouraged and also just looking at opportunities to have some sort of work or experience on, on campus and on res. Um, and the other question that I wanted to tackle was around the ATS um, system. So what I would say is um, really customizing your CV. I know a lot of times recruiters struggle with that. Uh, people just copy and paste, you know, it's like a one size fits all sort of approach to how you submit your CV, but especially when you're working with an automated system, you want to customize your CV for that particular organization and for that opportunity in particular. So looking at keywords that would be important for you to add, especially in the skills section of your CV and having key headlines, you know, education skills, um, work experience, those are some of the, the key words that those systems are going to be looking for and making sure that you are customizing your CV, not lying because you will, you know, that's going to be the worst thing that you can do, but just customize your CV for that specific opportunity that you are applying for. Should you let them know that you were a prefect in grade seven and should you include a picture or a selfie on your CV? No. Don't 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 do that. And also what you being a prefect in grade seven that you want to add your most recent uh, milestones. So that you were, you know, a li library assistant when you were in grade three isn't going to make that much effort. I, I mean, it's not going to change much in terms of how people perceive you. So you want to make sure that what you put on your CV is going to be the most relevant to the opportunity that you are applying for. So for example, graduate programs want to see leadership experience. So if you've been mentoring students, definitely add that. Also having references, having really good references, not like your uncle and your cousin. You know, if you are, you know, mentoring people, you want to have really great quality references that people can call and say, listen, can you tell me about Kozai? Can you tell me about Lerato? And they can speak very well on your behalf in terms of the kind of person that you are. The next one is, what do you do if they ask you a question in an interview and you don't know the answer? <laughs> Let them know that you don't know the answer. Being authentic is, is so important because you need to also understand that you're, you know, you're being interviewed by people. For me, when I interviewed young, young candidates, the interviews that I've enjoyed the most are 
the the interviews where the person was just themselves you know we were able to laugh we were able to build that rapport and those are the candidates that I remember after a long day of interviewing people I'm going to remember the people that were just themselves so if you don't know you know you could just say I actually I've never thought about that or actually that's such a good question I need to think about that or um, can I pop you an email once I have researched that a little bit, you know, just be authentic because not everybody knows everything. And especially as young talent, the people that are interviewing you, they know you don't know, you don't have a lot of business acumen. You don't have a lot of business experience. So if they ask you something, you know, you can say, listen, I'm not really sure I'm going to give it my best shot, but I just need to let you know that it might be a bit um, shaky, but I'll, I'll get back to you. <laughs> nice one. And then um, here's a great question from Malejo saying, is it possible to request a reason why you were not picked after an interview or a job application if you feel like you're really qualified? Mm, that would be so valuable because sometimes you don't know where you went wrong. Um, so if you are able to ask for that feedback, that would be brilliant because that would then set you up for the next um, interview and really not taking it personally, the feedback, just take it in, learn from what you can and just keep it moving. Great. And then I think a final question, Tepiso, would be around those really tough questions that you know you have and you have all of these burning questions. How much am I going to be paid? Somebody's got a question here about if you get an opportunity to work outside of the province that you live and you want to know about things like accommodation and that sort of thing. Mm. At what point do you pose those, those burning questions that are possibly deal breakers for you? Mm. Um, I would say, you know, those are questions that you could ask maybe in the, the follow-up interview, because obviously now you need to make really big decisions. And even when you start looking for opportunities, it's very tempting to apply for absolutely everything. But what if you get, I remember when I got uh, offered a job, but it, I would have to move to, to Durban. And it was such a great job, but it wasn't aligned with my vision and it wasn't aligned with where I wanted, where my life was going at the time. So moving to Durban just was not an opportunity. It was just a way out of the question. And it was a difficult decision and it was a difficult decision to walk away from that opportunity. But you need to know, you know, what are your deal breakers? And that is going to be very critical for you because that's going to support you in making the right decision for you and goes back to having that level of discernment around not every opportunity is the right opportunity. So you need to know, even in terms of finances, you know, some organizations unfortunately will take advantage of young talent and do not pay you what you're worth. But if you're desperate, you know, or will you take the opportunity? What's your absolute lowest baseline in terms of salary that you're prepared to take? Um, especially if you need to travel to work every day. It doesn't make sense if you're earning a stipend, but by the mid-month, you know, you already needing to ask your mom for money, your uncle, cousin, you know. So you really no need to look at what value would I be getting from this opportunity versus what the cost is of actually taking this opportunity. Wow, beautiful. Tippy, so where has all the time gone? <laughs> it was absolutely amazing having you on. Um, let's quickly, uh, I'm going to quickly go through the activities for the week and then please think of your tip for the week. And Kudzai, you can come back on screen as well and give us your um, tip for the week shortly. So guys, for this week, log on to the L Plus Earn Moodle platform, register, download resources, participate in forums and quizzes, and you can win a weekly prize. And I'm going to be announcing prizes for today's webinar shortly. Remember that there are two weekly prizes of 300 Rand shopping vouchers for the most interactive and then for the first participant to complete their weekly activities. So go to www.lplusearn.org. ZA. All right. And if you have any issues with registering on the platform, you can get in touch with crystal at groundedmedia.co.za via email. The email address is in the chat. The link to the website is also in the chat. So please do make sure of the hashtag, hashtag secure the bag. So without further ado, let me announce our winners for today's webinar participation and today I feel like everybody should have been a winner because the chat was lit and there was just so much conversation happening there but our winners for today's webinar is 
first of all, Sibabalwe Kela. Well done, Sibabalwe. Well done to you for participating. Let's have some snaps and congrats for Sibabalwe in the chat. And then last but not least, Murendeni. Murendeni Matevele. Well done to you as well, Murendeni. You also receive a 300 Rand shopping voucher. So well done to the two of you. Thank you for your participation in today's webinar. Remember that everybody who has been part of the webinar today will receive data as well, okay? Um, so uh, that will get through to you. It's automatically sent through to your cell phone. Could I final tip for the week from you? All right, Darren. So for the final tip of the week, I'd actually like to read like one of my favorite quotes from Theodore Roosevelt. And I believe like it aligns to me and actually being present and doing what's necessary. So it reads, uh, it is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena, whose face is murdered by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end that triumph is high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those who, who are cold and timid souls, who neither know victory nor defeat. So I believe that um, this is one of my favorite quotes and it can actually add value to the people here because you have to be in the arena, you have to be fighting. Don't just be on the sidelines and being an auditor with the red pen there saying this one didn't do right, this one did wrong, while as you're not in the arena. Go there in the arena and fight like the rest of them. And I believe that everyone here can do it. The fact that you are here today means that you are very much capable, capable and you can do anything that you set your mind upon. So yeah, thank you. Halala, could I Oprah Winfrey Roosevelt to all of you? That is so, so inspirational. Could I thank you? I think it was so great. I think what really came through from your, from your segment is really just, you, you've, you've given so much hope. You've really given so much hope to everyone on the webinar today because it was, um, we, we can see that there's hope and that there's, there's opportunities. And as you say, we just need to stay in the ring, get in there, and we're going to get there. Thank you very, very much, Kudzai, for sharing your, your experience with us. Let, last up, let's get um, Tepiso back for your uh, tip of the week. My tip of the week, I really want to challenge our participants to you know, sit and really think about what your brand is, because you are a brand. Um, so it's very important for you to be mindful about what you're putting out there. Um, you know, a lot of times recruiters and organizations will Google you. They will check your social media. So it's very important for you guys to be mindful about what you're putting out there and the perception that organizations would have of you. So what is what you're putting out there? Is it going to be beneficial? Is it adding value to your brand? Or is it, you know, taking away from your brand? So I really want to challenge you guys um, as your coach to say, really look at what you're putting out there. Really look at how you're creating your brand, how you're building your brand and think about what you can do to make sure that when you are ready to get out there and start applying for those jobs, your brand is in the strongest position possible to really put you ahead of all the, comp the competitors in the competition uh, so that you guys can get those positions and those opportunities. Sipiso, thank you. You've shared so selflessly. You've given so much. You've made it so practical. And again, it's been so inspirational too. And thank you for your time. Thank you for the work that you do. And thank you for giving us really, really great tips um, that, that the young people can use to get into the world of work and be successful. We salute you and thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Darren. And thank you, everybody. Thank you for making the time to, to show up today. I really appreciate it. Beautiful, guys. And that's it. What an amazing session this has been. <laughs> this was so, so amazing. Um, I really think it was really great. I think I've just cut my screen off, but there we go. <laughs> so well done. Um, it was really a great session. 
I will see you next week. Next week, we're talking about finances and mental health. All right. That's what we're going to be discussing next week. So please join us. Remember to go onto the website, www.alplusearn.org.za. Remember to um, participate with the quizzes, forums on the Moodle platform as well. Remember to use the hashtag, hashtag secure the bag. And most importantly, invite your friends guys share this information this is a free webinar um, and the information here is so so valuable so please invite your friends to join us for next week we have three sessions left and they can still benefit next week we're talking finances and mental health because we know money can be stressful but it's been my absolute pleasure hosting you on today's webinar again thank you to the Asisa foundation thank you to all of you for participating in this program this has been the l plus earn financial literacy program for young adults my name is darren august have a great week and hashtag secure the bag bye-bye guys i'll see you all next week <laughs>